Good morning, St. Mark's. Paige just said, hey, we're live. <laughs> not recording, not dead. Dead uh, and live. Uh, hey, third Sunday of Lent, wet Sunday, outside and inside. Uh, wet Sunday was hearing about water in God's Word. One of the various scripture readings that to do uh, involve water throughout the Bible. And today we have some of those as well. Or third Sunday of Lent as... as uh, Mr. Meadows back there calls it a, uh, this is spring training for Easter, uh, spring training baseball boys over there. Uh, Pastor Vern is away today at Via de Cristo. If you want to know more, something more about Via de Cristo, contact me uh, following worship, or there's some other names in the bulletin announcement pages that you could also talk to about Via de Cristo. But that's where Pastor Vern is today, not sleeping late like uh, many of us could or would should be. Uh, and, but we have Pastor Bonnie Klaus here with us today to help out with worship and today not only in preaching but also in a service of healing on this uh, third Sunday because perhaps some of what is going on in the conversation of Jesus and the Samaritan woman is a bit of healing perhaps. So we're going to celebrate uh, healing and God's healing for us uh, this day as we, as we also will celebrate a baptism here in a bit. Uh, are there other prayers or announcements to, uh, to share with the congregation this morning? Well, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Allow me to belabor that announcement a moment and say I probably got Pastor Bonnie's last name incorrect a moment ago. Ago, uh, I said that the Southern pronunciation. I said Klaus, but uh, probably Bonnie Kloss, maybe Kloss. Um, but also, Pastor Bonnie is a member of St. Mark's as of uh, recently, several weeks ago, and also a chaplain at Novant uh, Hospital in Huntersville. So we welcome Pastor Bonnie to the pulpit uh, with us this day. Also, speaking of last names, I mentioned this last Sunday, but today we have flowers up here behind me in honor of and celebration of, of uh, Lisa and her new last name, Harper, and, uh, and Jerry at their wedding now eight days ago or so. Please stand as you are able as we celebrate uh, God and uh, through water and through the Holy Spirit this day. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who journeys with us these 40 days and sustains us with a gift of grace.
merciful God, the fountain of living water, you quench our thirst and wash away our sin. Give us this water always. Bring us to drink from the well that flows with the beauty of your truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace, the peace of Christ be with you all. Thank you. You may share Christ's peace with those near you. First reading is from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Since we are all justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. We boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produced, <laughs> produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit and has been given to us. For a while, we were still weak. At the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for the righteous person, through perhaps for a good reason. For a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners. Christ died for us much more surely than now that we have been justified by his blood. We will be saved through him for the wrath of God. For if, for, for if while we were enemies, we reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more surely have been reconciled having been reconciled, will still be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I invite our children to come forward for a children's message. Is that Paige? Mackenzie? All right. And... Uh, Claire, do you want to come forward as well? Yeah. Come on down. I'm all, thank you, Mackenzie, for reading today, for sharing the reading. And welcome back from spring break, from wherever you guys went. And now you're back here on this beautiful springtime day. Maybe. Maybe not. So, who else is coming forward here? This is the Rodriguez family. This is Jennifer and Eddie and their daughters, right? Yeah. Claire and Quinn. Good to see you all. A moment ago, you just read Mackenzie. Don't sit down yet because Mackenzie and Paige, you got something to do next. A moment ago, you read that God's love had been poured into our hearts. So we have a whole lot of containers that pour out God's love, right, in the world. We have a church. We have a container of yourself that pours out God's love. And then we have regular old pitchers and cups like this. Would you guys do me a favor, Paige and Mackenzie, would you pour from those containers water into this baptismal bowl? You may go ahead and do that. And Quinn, I know you're too young to remember this, but a reminder that we were reconciled to God, Quinn, through Jesus Christ, that this Jesus gave us his life so that we may be saved, the scripture read, that, that, or Mackenzie read, 
from the book of Romans, so we may be saved, so that we may be reconciled to God. Thank you for helping to pour out God's love through the Holy Spirit, Paige and Mackenzie, for us this day to see, for us to see that, but also to, uh, to kind of experience it as well. Uh, in a little bit, we'll invite anyone who wants to dip a finger into the baptismal bowl to do so when they come forward later on in worship. But for now, we're going to invite Pastor Bonnie and, and Quinn and her family to come stand around the font as we celebrate this this living enactment of what Paul wrote about in that book of Romans. Congregation in the front section of uh, your red book, a reminder of what baptism is in baptism and what baptism does. In baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity, and by water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ. Living with Christ and in the communion of saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. Who do you present for baptism? We'll make this formal here. Quinn Elise Rodriguez. Thank you. Eddie and Jennifer, called by the Holy Spirit and trusting in the grace and love of God. As you bring forward Quinn Elise to be baptized into Christ, uh, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with her among God's faithful people, to bring her to the Word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in her hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture her in faith and prayer so that she may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others in the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help her grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, answer, I do. Thank you. And congregation gathered here this day, family especially of Quinn, do you promise to help support and pray for Quinn and her family in Quinn's new life in Christ? If so, answer, we do. We do. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus. We continue, by the way, on page 229. To profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, answer, I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Now, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters. And by your word, you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. And through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Eddie, if you would, hold. 
Quinn over the baptismal water. And we'll pour water over the top of your head three times, okay? This is a, a Sunday morning bath for you. Maybe a second one. I don't know. Quinn Elise, you are baptized in the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Can you say amen? Clara, can you say amen? Amen. There is a uh, cloth right behind you, Jennifer. Here we go. I'll let you dry off her head. And Claire, will you hold this for me? Will you hold that? Thank you, Claire. Yeah. The words on the bottom of the page 230. Blessed be God, the source, the source of all of life, life, the word of, of salvation, salvation, the spirit, the spirit of, mercy. of mercy. And Quinn, you belong to Christ in whom you have been baptized. We'll pause there and continue with a prayer. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin and erase them and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Quinn with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. I'm going to bless you. We're going to try. There we go. Quinn, there you go. Child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Put my book down. Go ahead, oh. Pastor Bonnie. Is there something more. We need to light a candle, right? Yes. Mackenzie, will you come help with us? Um, grab your acolyte uh, flamethrower. And if you would, come over here and... Yeah, bring a, bring a light for us to share. As Mackenzie does that, in a moment, we'll give Quinn and her family this book about water come down. And it mentions that I am the sun, I am fire and light. And we see the fire and the light right now. I'm the first one at the end of the night who heard your, of your naming day. And God told me to whisper the news to my sister. Claire, do you have a sister? Yeah. A child will be named today. We named this child Quinn Elise Rodriguez. A little bit later in this story, it says, I am the water that flows in a river, the river of life forever and ever. Yes, I am the water that came down to your town to find you, child, and you I found the day you were baptized. And then there's a picture of a family that looks kind of like yours. There's four, five, six people gathered here. And it says, I am the water they washed you in, your head, your heart, your soul, your skin. Clean to the devil, clean from sin the day you were baptized. And you and your family can read this book on March 12th, year after year, as well as any other day of the year as you remember your baptism. Pastor Bonnie, we have a candle here for, the, for Quinn. We light this candle as a reminder and we invite you to let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven we invite you to light this candle every year on her anniversary of her baptism i'm going to give it to you mom it's probably not safe with her so let us welcome the newly baptized we welcome, welcome you, you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Amen. You all may have a seat as we sing a, baptized, a, a baptismal song.
for the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the fourth chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. When Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard, Jesus is making and baptizing more disciples than John, although it was not Jesus himself but his disciples who baptized, Jesus left Judea and started back to Galilee. But he had to go through Samaria, so he came to a Samaritan town called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came down to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food, and the Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water, gushing up to eternal life. The woman said, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered, I have no husband. Jesus said, You are right in saying I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. She said, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain. But you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, believe me, said Jesus, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem, you will worship what you do not know. We worship what we know for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples returned, and they were astonished that he was speaking with a woman. But no one said, what do you want, or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them. And he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The congregation may be seated. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. I wonder what would have happened if the woman had come to draw water in the 21st century America. Upon seeing her approach the well, how many of us would have pulled out our phones and tried to avoid eye contact with her? With those ragged clothes, I bet she's just asking for a handout. Or 
Hmm, she's wearing a headscarf. Guess she's not from around here. Or, ugh, I watched her pull into the parking lot and those bumper stickers on her car tell me everything I need to know about her. Now, perhaps I'm cynical and perhaps I'm underestimating our capacity for grace as fellow citizens, even as people of faith. But in today's day and age, it's easy to feel like we are lost in a maze of 10-foot walls that separate us from one another. That's why now, more than ever, we need stories like this. Stories that remind us that such division is neither new nor inevitable. That division does not reflect God's vision for creation. We need stories that teach us that there is salvation to be found in embracing others. This, after all, is key to Jesus' mission and is precisely why he heads to Samaria in this passage from John. You see, Jesus had to go through Samaria, not because it was on the road back to Galilee. Jesus needed to pass through Samaria in order to fulfill his mission. It makes sense. Last work, last week, we read in John 3.16 that God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. God so loved the world. Jews and Romans and, yes, even Samaritans. So we find the Messiah by a well in Sychar, tired out from his roundabout journey. And we know right away that something significant is about to happen. Not only because Jesus has set out to fulfill his mission, but because he has stopped at a well, at Jacob's well, to be precise. At the very well where Jacob met his beloved bride, Rachel. Throughout the Old Testament, the well is the place where boy meets girl. It's the precursor to the church's singles group and the bar and Match.com. John is setting the stage for a significant encounter. But unlike those Old Testament stories, it's not the perfect catch who comes around the corner. It is a nameless woman who's coming to draw water in the heat of the day, a Samaritan woman, a five-time widow, or more likely, a five-time divorcee, cast off by multiple men, a woman who comes to the well at high noon because none of the other Samaritan women want anything to do with her. This is a woman on the margins, even of her own community. She is an outcast, a woman whom no one loves, but who desperately needs the love of Jesus. And because God so loved the world, something amazing happens. She receives it. Because God so loves the world, Jesus crosses the boundary. He casts off the rigid religious rules. He defies expectation. He strikes up conversation. Can I have a drink? It's a simple request, really, but one that conveys so much more than his thirst. It conveys vulnerability. His question levels the playing field just enough that this Jewish man and this Samaritan woman can actually have a conversation. He takes a risk that begins a relationship. It surprises this woman at the well. Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans, after all. But undeterred by this woman's reserve, Jesus continues. He offers her living water. Forget the fact that Jews despise Samaritans. Forget the fact that single men do not converse with scorned women. Forget the barriers and the stereotypes. There is something precious to be found here. And it's something that satisfies the soul far more than water could ever satisfy thirst. It's the love and grace of God. And it flows abundance 
in abundance here at the well. Love and grace flow freely, even as this woman's secret, as this woman's shame is laid bare. Even as Jesus names the truth that isolates her, you have had five husbands, and one of you has not, that you have now is not your husband. These are words not of condemnation, but are words of compassion. For Jesus sees this woman for who she is, who, one who has been deemed unlovable, unworthy, one who has suffered the loss of relationship, the loss of community, and in naming her truth, in revealing who she is, Jesus also reveals who he is, or at least he opens the way to revelation. Sir, you are a prophet, she says. Tell me, where is the right place to worship? Now, this is a loaded question coming from a woman of Samaria. For this is the issue that has divided Jews and Samaritans for centuries. Tell me, sir, which one of us is right? And with his reply, Jesus surprises her yet again. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you worship, but how you worship. When the Messiah comes, you will see that you must worship in spirit and in truth. You will find salvation not in practices that have inspired division, but in relationships that heal. You will find salvation in community, in dwelling with Jesus and those who belong to him. When the Messiah comes, this is how you will encounter God. I know that the Messiah is coming, the Samaritan woman says, hope stirring within her as she awaits his response. For she has sensed the divine in this encounter. She has felt the grace of God poured out in abundance and tasted salvation here at the well. And Jesus teaches her that she is no fool to hope. I am he, Jesus says, I am he. This encounter with the Messiah transforms her. Jesus has deemed this rejected woman worthy of revelation, worthy of love, and this emboldens her. Her thirst has been quenched. She has drunk deeply from the well of grace. So this woman leaves behind her jug and she, that she has brought to, to fetch water, and she returns to the community that has rejected her. Come and see, she says, Come and see the one who knows everything about me and loves me still. Come and see the one who offers living water, who pours out grace in abundance. Come and see the Savior of the world. Through her witness, through her testimony, this woman is restored to relationship with a community that heeds her call and comes to find the Savior of the world. As the setting of this story suggested it would be, this has been a significant encounter at the well. And not just for the Samaritan woman who has tasted salvation, but for Jesus himself. Her thirst has been quenched and his hunger satisfied. Because God so loves the world, we who seek to follow Jesus must also love the world, we are called to seek out those who are different, those we despise, those whom the world deems unlovable or unworthy, those who come to the well in the heat of the day, not because they are welcome there any other time. Like Jesus, we are called to sit at that well, ready to offer compassion and hopeful that we might also be filled. Have you heard the story of Nora and her 82-year-old friend, Mr. Dan? It's a piece of good news that's been floating around for quite a while. It's the story of a powerful friendship that began with a surprising but significant encounter. You see, Mr. Dan is a widower who knows all too well 
what it feels like to be buried under a mountain of grief. After his wife died, Dan fell into a deep depression. And for months, he felt like he had no sense of purpose, no reason to live, until a little girl named Nora reached out, literally and figuratively, to draw him into relationship. One day, Mr. Dan was shopping at his local grocery store when, as the CBS News reports puts it, this unapproachable man was approached by a four-year-old girl. Apparently, Dan's utter distaste for grocery shopping was evident in his face as he reached the end of the canned food aisle. That's where he encountered Nora and her mom. The four-year-old stood up in her shopping cart and reached out her arms. Hi, old person. It's my birthday today, she said. And then, much to her mother's dismay, Nora demanded a hug from the grumpy stranger standing before her. And Dan's face lit up. A hug? Absolutely. So there, at the end of the canned food aisle, the grieving widower welcomed the embrace of this audacious little girl. The newfound friends introduced themselves and snapped a photo. And then, as unlikely pairs parted ways, Dan turned to Nora's mom. And with his lip quivering and his eyes filling with tears, he said, you don't know. This is the first time for quite a while that I've been this happy. Dan left that store with his thirst quenched in ways that we could never have imagined when he set out to complete, complete his dreaded chore. And it seems Nora did too. In the months since that surprising encounter, this unexpected friendship has blossomed into something that sustains, something that's life-giving. Nora and her mom visit their 82-year-old friend once a week. As Mr. Dan is the first to attest, this relationship, born of a surprising encounter at the well, has given him new life. She opened me to a love that I didn't know existed, Dan said. I've made room in my heart for a lot more. Now, I don't think that that four-year-old Nora set out to sit at the well, so to speak, but through her generosity, her bold love, she offered a gift of living water to someone desperately in need of Jesus' love. There are plenty of wells in this world. Some are tables where you learn from sisters and brothers of other faiths. Some are community garden plots or feed and see where you meet a neighbor who has never felt comfortable walking inside the church. Some are seats on the bus where you sit with someone of another race and listen. I mean really listen. When he talks about what it means to be black or Asian or Latino in this country. Some are chairs at the fireplace at the nursing home where you swap stories with the woman whose family never comes to visit. And some are aisles in the grocery store. What is your well in your life? What place allows for an encounter that just might prove significant? What is the site that quenches another's thirst and satisfies your hunger, that propels both of you to go out and say, come and see the savior of the world? Wherever that well is for you, we are called to sit down and linger, to wait and watch for opportunities to offer grace, to look beyond stereotypes and barriers, and to invite into each other into a relationship, to share the living water that we have received from the Savior of the world, and to feast on the good news together. And with the Spirit's help, our words and deeds will reflect Jesus to one another, and by the grace of God, Jesus will be revealed to us too. Amen.
You may be seated for our prayers as we uh, enter into this portion of worship with a service of healing. Our Lord Jesus healed many as a sign of the reign of God come near and sent disciples to continue this work of healing with prayer, the laying on of hands and anointing. In the name of Christ, the great healer and reconciler of the world, we now entrust to God all who are in need of healing. Let us pray. Loving God, our source and our final home, we give you thanks for the gifts of life on earth for our human bodies and all you have created. In your great mercy, hear us, O God. Merciful God, by the wounds of your Son, we are healed. Bring your saving health to all people. In your great mercy, hear, hear us, us, O God. God. Holy God, your Spirit came upon us in the waters of baptism and brought us into the communion of saints. Renew in us the grace of baptism by which we share in Christ's death and resurrection. In your great mercy, hear, hear us, us, O, o God. God. Mighty God, your Son, Jesus, brought healing and wholeness to all. Bring your healing presence now to all who are discouraged or in despair, and to those who are sick or in pain, especially those we now name aloud from our lips or silently in our hearts. John, Gil. In your great mercy, hear, hear us, us, O God. God. Compassionate God, the strength of those who suffer, bring hope and peace to all who are in mental, physical, or spiritual distress. In your great mercy, hear us, O God. Almighty God, source of human knowledge, give skill, wisdom, and compassion to all who provide medical care, especially those in this congregation as caregivers, as therapists, doctors, nurses, and all the ways in which your medical care is provided, even and especially through your servant, Chaplain Bonnie. In your great mercy, hear, hear us, O oh God. God. Loving God, our Creator and Redeemer, give gentleness and courage to family members, friends, and caregivers of those who suffer. In your great mercy, hear us, O oh God. God of great and abundant mercy, with your presence sustain all for whom we pray. Drive away their suffering, give them firm hope, and strengthen their trust in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, we pray. Amen. Sisters and brothers, I invite you to come and receive a sign of healing and wholeness in the name of the triune God. This day we'll invite you to come and uh, navigate the steps and gather kneeling around the rail or standing here if you so desire to come forward. If you pr prefer to come forward but not navigate the steps uh, in a bit, you may come and sit on the first pew, although it's kind of busy over on this side uh, with the various gifts. Or you can remain in your seat and following those who come around the chancel rail, raise your hand and we will come out to where you are seated.
Let us pray. Living God, through the laying on of hands and anointing, grant comfort in suffering to all who are in need of healing. When they are afraid, give them courage. When afflicted, give them patience. When dejected, give them hope. And when alone, assure them of the support of your holy people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom as we pray. Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we, we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, who is a strong tower to all, to whom all things in heaven and on earth bow and obey, be now and evermore your sure defense, and help you to know that the name given to us for health and salvation is the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.